Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're making an Orchid unboxing. Yay, so excited! And I'm so happy to be back home and making this video because on the way back from the post office, my car actually broke down in the middle of the city. Luckily, my boyfriend could come and help me out. We actually managed to drive it all the way to the mechanic, which was close, but we did sit quite a bit in the heat. These girls have sat in the heat, so I'm slightly nervous, but I think everybody's okay. So yeah, I will enjoy this unboxing. So these orchids have been sent to me by my friend. And of course they are special orchids because my friend knows me, she knows what I like. So without further ado, let us get to work. I'm gonna start with the top because I already see some more kids barely waiting to come out of the box. So first off, okay, we have a tag here. Brasso Costelle Tarantula Sweet Orange. And this is purchased from Seattle Orchid. It's in the USA. So for those of you who live in the USA, there you have it. If you see something that you like, you can check out these stores. I myself have never purchased from these stores, so I cannot really give you feedback. If it's a good nursery, I guess it is. I've heard of Seattle Orchid actually quite a lot. And the funny thing with this orchid is that I did used to have this orchid. I purchased it about a year and a half ago from Carcidum 2, I think it was from eBay. But the problem is it never actually did anything good for me. It slowly withered away, which was fairly strange. And just last week, I decided to totally give up on it. You can see a picture on the screen. There was nothing I could do about it anymore. It never ever grew for me. So I'm pretty sure there was something wrong with that orchid. And I'm so, so incredibly happy to have it again because this orchid looks absolutely fantastic. As the name suggests, it is an orange orchid. And yes, I love orange, but it has a beautiful shape to it. It is an intergeneric. I love intergenerics. And this particular orchid looks fantastic. It looks so incredibly healthy. We have a new growth. The pseudobulb is not wrinkled at all. And we do have some back bulbs here as well. So really, really lovely orchid. Looks like it's in very good condition. I do believe I have good roots inside the pot. It appears to be potted in full sphagnum moss, which is okay, especially for these types of orchids because they do really enjoy their moisture. So already I'm a lot more invigorated and a lot happier because I get another chance with this orchid. It's not a very common orchid actually. So I'm gonna do my very best to maintain it happy and healthy. Next up, let's get this tiny one. This is a cat, Leah. Oh, how pretty. She looks so pretty. This is BLC Majestic Light Glory. I will try to find a suitable picture to show you guys. I cannot really use all the pictures that I find on the internet. I will actually try to show you the picture on this website. This is coming from Odom's Orchids. I have another Cattleya from this nursery. It appears to be based out of Florida. So again, it's a USA nursery. And this orchid, oh my goodness, the flower is absolutely amazing. It's one of those, hmm, hard to explain, but now I think I can explain it better. I can only explain it with the help of African violets. You know chimeras, you know how they have that pinwheel uh, type of pattern? This is how this orchid looks like. It appears to have a pinwheel color pattern on it. And I think this is the best way to explain it. I do suggest that you Google pictures as well. She has a new growth here and the older growths all look very, very good. We have plum pseudobulbs. This is actually not a completely mature orchid. My friend was saying that this is a young plant, so most probably we won't have flowers very, very soon. But with Cattleyas, you never know. You can actually expect them to grow pretty fast, depending on their growth rate. There are hybrids which grow really, really fast, and I'm hoping this is one of them because this pseudobulb really honestly doesn't look that old. So I'm hoping she has a fast, fast growth because the flowers are out of this world. I love this one. Alrighty, this one. Oh, this one is a big girl. Oh, look at her. These pseudobulbs are impressive. Okay, so the tag is actually missing on this one, but I know what it is. It is an Alessara Memoria Donald Yamada. And of course, the flowers are absolutely amazing. But look at this orchid, she is so, so big. These girls really need some hydration, but I have enough pseudobulbs, I don't think it's going to be a problem. And I have multiple new growths actually. There are two right here, but this looks like a new pseudobulb as well, so I might get a new growth from this pseudobulb. 
which is great. It's going to be a really nice bushy plant. So let us continue. We should have two more orchids here. Oh my, I thought that one was a big girl. <laughs> this is even bigger. So this one has a tag. This is Alessara Pacific Nova variety Okika. Now this is new. I used to have the Pacific Nova, but I lost it slowly and surely in the Fusarium outbreak. And I don't think you can properly see this orchid but I was never sure exactly what Pacific Nova I had because it was a no ID. So I'm not entirely sure how this one is supposed to look like really. Seeing the name Okika, I'm thinking maybe it has variegated leaves, but no, it doesn't appear to have variegation. So it must refer to how the flowers look like. So it might actually look like the one that I used to have, which I will show you in a picture on the screen. I'll also share with you down below the link so you can see how it looks like. It's a beautiful orchid. If it ends up looking like that, I'm gonna be happy, but it could actually look like something else. So again, super excited and look at those roots. Very, very well-grown orchid. Oh, and this one is coming from Seattle Orchid as well. And this one should be the last orchid that I have here. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, wow, look at this beauty. Oh my goodness. Talk about overgrown. This is, I think, the pride and joy of this package. This is Alessara Hilo Ablaze Hilo Gold. Coming from Seattle Orchid once again, I will try to visit the website and show you pictures from their website since they are purchased from there. It's amazing it looks gorgeous pretty out of this world if you ask me and just look how beautiful this particular one is very very heavy especially on this side and it does look mature the suitable bloomed this one not sure oh it bloomed as well so the new growth provided that it's not going to be very set back should bloom and i'm so so excited for it this one i have a feeling will give me a lot of work when it comes to repotting which i will do very very soon because it appears to be very very pot bound this pot is rock solid and i think it's full of roots honestly and compacted sphagnum moss so i'm sure the orchid will enjoy a good repotting and there we have them so i'll remove the box and look at the orchids all together and here are all the girls. A few thoughts before we end this video, being that they've spent quite a lot on transport and also they fit in the heat for a couple of hours or so until I waited for my boyfriend, figured out what the car's issue was, deciding if we need to call the insurance or not, going to the mechanic and so on. They are suffering from some dehydration. This one, not so much. The pot is still a little damp, which is good, but all of the other ones are really dehydrated. So repotting them now is not a good idea in my opinion. What I like to do is hydrate them, make sure that they are full of water before I go ahead and repot them and put them through the stress. No matter how gentle I am with the repotting, they will still undergo some stress because this medium is quite broken down. It's quite broken down. I might find big pieces of bark which will damage the roots. They might be root bound. So there is a high chance I will damage the root system. And if I don't at least make sure that they have some water, I might actually really set them back. So I will water them and I will keep them wet for a couple of days or so. And afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and repot them. I find that orchids do bounce back a little faster when I do that rather than repotting it as I receive it. They don't look like they need repotting right now. There's no pests. There's no very questionable medium. They just look like they've been through some transport and through some issues pretty much, but nothing serious. Second, I need to really inspect the leaves because some of them have some damage. Lack of air and also extreme heat, which they went through today for sure, but I'm not sure what happened on transport as well. Because of these factors, some leaves do have some active infections and these need to be cut away. Can you see that the leaf looks like it's wet? That's an infection and that spreads really fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut whatever I see infected, all the yellowing leaves, I will cut them under the yellowing part. I will make sure that there is no active infection. And I need to look on all orchids because if you look closely, you'll see that some do have active infections or potentially active infections, which I don't want. 
Look at this new growth. Can you see this sheath? That's okay. It's not a very important part of the new growth. It's okay. I can cut it here. I can remove it. It's not going to affect the new growth, but if I let it be, it will advance. So I'm going to have to go on every orchid and see what's wrong, what they have, maybe spray a little bit of hydrogen peroxide and then let it dry out. I'll see what I'll do, but I do need to address all of these active infections. Because if I let them be, they will take over more and more of the new growth or of the leaf. And I think that's about it. I'm just going to maintain them rather moist and in the weekend probably pot them up. And that's about it for today. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. This is Wednesday actually, but I'm pretty sure I will post this video on Monday. And being that that was filmed last week and now it's Monday, some developments have occurred. Here we have two pretty doves. One of them doesn't want to be in the shot right now. Um, yeah, you guys. I have doves once again. Now, I didn't purchase them. I didn't like receive them as a gift or anything. They kind of just dropped in my life. Uh, I'll tell you the story because it's funny. So on Saturday, there was a wedding that we were invited to. And me and my boyfriend didn't actually go to the church ceremony. We just went to the reception. But his parents did go to the church ceremony. Hi there. Welcome to the shot. And you know how sometimes people release pigeons or doves when people get married? Well, usually what happens is you rent them. There is somebody, a grower, which brings his birds. You release them for the photos, everybody's happy, but then the grower takes them back and puts them back in their aviary until the next gig, pretty much. So you don't get to keep them, you hire the grower and the birds. Well, apparently it wasn't the case with this wedding. And what happened was, they released these two birds and instead of soaring to the sky, they just plunged into the grass because these are baby doves. Initially, I thought their wings were clipped, but no, they actually don't have enough flight feathers. They cannot fly actually. So when this happened, my boyfriend's dad immediately recognized what they were because, hey, I have Jackie, or actually my mom has Jackie now, and I constantly talk about her and show them pictures and videos. So he immediately recognized what they were and went to pick them off the grass. So he asked the organizers, or I guess the parents of the couple, what's up with the birds? And they were like, well, we got them to release them. And yeah, they were supposed to fly away. And he was like, yeah, no, these are not wild birds. I'm gonna take them now. And they were like, sure, why not? So he took them in the actual wedding cage. And this was all on Saturday evening. So when they came home, and by the way, they live very close to us, they called us and said, hey, we have a problem. Can you come down and help us? So we went and I saw the cage with the two birds on the table. Surprise! I immediately took them out, hugged them, started to cry. My boyfriend's dad told me the story and he said, I got them for you because you know how to take care of them. And I told my boyfriend, we're keeping them, end of story. And you know, up until now, after we lost Bendy, we were like, no, we don't want any more birds. And especially my boyfriend, he never wanted any bird ever again. He took it very hard as well. Um, he didn't oppose, he didn't say anything. He was like, yep, we're keeping them. <laughs> so We took them upstairs. Uh, Sally, Saturday night, they had to sit in that crammed little cage. We had nothing for them. We disposed of everything that Bendy had because it was too hard and if Bendy had any pathogen that we couldn't fix, we didn't want to transmit that pathogen to other birds, you know? So we didn't have anything left from Bendy. Um, but the next day, we actually found a pet shop which was open on a Sunday morning, which is rare. Everybody here is closed pretty much on Sunday, but this pet shop was open. I found the perfect cage. It's quite spacious. It has everything that I wanted to have. And today, hey, where are you trying to go? <laughs> They're trying to fly, but they cannot fly, so they do this. There you go. It's practice. Good job. So yeah, today I need to go and get more purchase and everything that I need. Everything is open today. Uh, but yeah, that's how I ended up having two doves. Now, I don't know if they're boys or girls. So far, their names are Maya and Joey, but I'm not sure if they're boys or girls. I'm gonna go to the vet this week, do a checkup, maybe take some sample poops, do some tests, you know, the drill, and maybe we can actually do a DNA testing on the feathers and see if they're boys or girls. It would be nice to know. You cannot visually know until they actually develop instincts and you can tell, uh, but we'll see about that. So there we have it. I have birds again. <laughs>
Now, I'm gonna tell you something and just take it very lightly. I don't believe in stuff like paranormal stuff and things of the sorts. I'm actually a very realistic person. Um, but when I go through something painful, I let myself get comforted by all sorts of imagined thoughts, okay? So take it like that. Um, I knew something would happen. For a while now, I thought that three months after we lost Bendy, something will happen. Either a bird will come, either a sign, something will happen. And last week, um, it was the 16th, three months after we lost Bendy, and I knew, I started to get ready. Not sure for what, but I started to kind of open my heart again. I'm gonna have to keep my eyes open, you know? This was last week. And on Saturday, we get these birds and I knew it. I knew it was what I kind of felt was about to happen. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a coincidence really at the end of the day. But as I was saying, in the darkest moments, I kind of get comfort out of this imagined scenario. Anyway, but yeah, I have two birds. And I'm so happy because I love little Jackies. That's how I call them, little Jackies. I'm not used to calling their names just yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep these names, but yeah, I'll keep you guys up to date. And I have to say, I'm pretty happy that there are two of them because I always feel horrible when I have to go grocery shopping and work a lot and not spend as much time as I would like with my birds. I'm happy there are two of them because they preen each other all the time and they keep each other company. So I don't feel that bad when I'm not around. Also, when I edit videos, I can take them with me because they're just so docile. Do you guys remember Jackie? Yeah, they're just chickens, pretty much. Yeah, my chickens, pretty chickens. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching this video and hearing me out. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, and other fun orchid subjects. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!